In the previous video, we saw how PyCharm makes it easy to work with your project's Python packages. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important reasons to use PyCharm, coding assistance. Can the IDE make me more productive? Hmm. Well, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Paul Everett, JetBrains Developer Advocate, and welcome to our PyCharm Getting Started series. This Getting Started series helps you settle into your new PyCharm home, but our data shows that 80% of you won't hear about the new videos because you haven't clicked the subscribe button. Subscribe now so we can send over a nice housewarming gift. Okay, just four videos. PyCharm is full of features that can help you while you're writing your code. Today, we're going to look at some of them from a basic perspective as they can become much more robust depending on the complexity of your project. PyCharm Professional Code Assistant supports Python and, and JavaScript and TypeScript and SQL and HTML and CSS whew, and other languages. So without further ado, here's how you can use PyCharm to code faster and better. Let's start now. First off, let's talk about context aware completion, where the IDE uses all kinds of smarts to help you finish your typing. I have a simple Python script open in my editor right now. As you can see, I have a class and it has some methods. If I start typing something here, you can see that PyCharm will prompt some options to complete my code, so I won't need to type the full line. In this case, I'm writing the letter C and PyCharm already offers me car. If it's the right completion, as it is in this case, I can just hit enter and it will complete the line for me. If the right completion is in the list, I can use the arrows on my keyboard to go up and down to select it and then to click enter. And finally, if the correct completion is not there, I can keep typing until PyCharm can figure it out for me. Code completion is not only available for classes, but also for methods. Let's see an example. We created a variable called BMW that instantiates from the car class. Now, if I want to use one of its methods, I can write BMW and then dot, and PyCharm will offer completion for the available methods. A cool tip, while enter adds the suggested completion, you can also click tab to switch an existing one for the new one, saving you some time. Code completion is also available for keywords. Let's say you want to import a package. If you start typing I at the top of your file, PyCharm will immediately offer import as a possible completion. The cool thing about code completion is that you can also use it in many other places, including method parameters, dictionaries, Django templates, inside F strings, and much, much more. Read the documentation for more details. That's cool, huh? But how does PyCharm do it? We just saw a very simple example, but sometimes you'll be working with much more complex projects with multiple interdependencies. How can PyCharm understand what class you're about to instantiate or what method you're about to call, etc.? Simply put, PyCharm examines the code of your entire project and creates a virtual map. This makes PyCharm fully aware of your code and allows actions like code completion to be performed immediately. The process of reading your entire project is called indexing, and it happens when you open your project, switch between branches, load or unload plugins, or after large external file updates. So next time you hear your fans right after you open a new project, keep in mind that this process will end soon and will give you access to powerful features that will make your life easier in a few moments. Okay, that said, another productivity booster that you might take for granted sometimes is syntax highlighting. 
As you can see in our script, PyCharm automatically detects keywords such as def, for, while, as well as class names, parameters, etc., and renders them in different colors. This makes it easier for you to scan your code, quickly recognize errors, and have a better overview of your code structure. You can update the color scheme if you prefer. To see how, check our documentation. I mentioned that syntax highlighting can help you quickly recognize errors, but this is not the main way to do it, of course. Let's see that next. One of the most important features for improving your code quality is what we call intention actions. As you work in the editor, PyCharm keeps analyzing your code to find ways to optimize it and detect errors. Whenever the IDE finds possible improvements, it shows a yellow bulb icon next to the current line. Here, for instance, I added if sudden equal equal true. Although valid syntax, it can be optimized and you see the yellow bulb right away. To access the intention action available for this line of code, I can click the light bulb or use the Alt-Enter keyboard shortcut. As you can see, PyCharm is offering me to replace Boolean expression with such and such. Intention actions cover a wide range of situations from warnings to optimizations to automation. This is a good example of automation. Let's say I want to invert this if condition. If I position my carrot here, PyCharm offers to handle it for me. I accept, but then I can undo to go back. Well, these are warnings, but things are not always great, we know. And PyCharm can also find problems within your code. In this case, whenever that happens, the light bulb color will be red. This is a signal that a quick fix is available, and to check possible solutions, you can use the same commands as before. We can see one example of a quick fix if we try to use a package without installing it first. Let's change our car from BMW to Tesla, and let's now add web under page as a property of the class car. Now let's create a quick method to fetch the Tesla website, assuming that the car needs this information to work. As you see here, I've written the method mentioning the package requests, but I haven't installed it yet. Do you see the red squiggly line and the red light bulb? Let's see what PyCharm offers us using Alt-Enter this time. Install and import package request sounds like what I need, so this is what I'm going to hit. As you see, PyCharm not only installed the package inside my virtual environment, but it also auto imported it into my script. The red squiggly and the light bulb are gone, and my code should now run smoothly. In this example, I imported an external package, but I could have also imported something from within my own project. PyCharm makes it easy to fix problems such as imports without interrupting your flow. Nobody likes problems, right? And neither does PyCharm and neither does the PyCharm team. That's why we work hard to make it easier for you to write better code and stay away from errors. But they happen, and now I want to share two quick ways to spot them in a file. When PyCharm finds warnings or errors, besides light bulbs and squiggly lines, it also displays your errors in the scroll bar. Let's see how it looks. Here's a file with a number of problems. As you can see, the stripes indicate where the problem was found. To see more information about the problem, you can hover the stripe or just click to navigate to the proper line. If you're not up to scrolling down your entire file searching for problems, though, the second quick way to spot problems is by checking the Problems widget. It summarizes errors and warnings and lets you quickly navigate to the Problems tool window to have a better description of what is going on. Here I can see the error and quickly navigate to the line where it happens. 
I can also look across my entire project. Okay, so let's fix this error and use the code reformat action to put everything in the right place. Now the errors and warnings are gone and the file is formatted according to PEP8 conventions. That's all for this video. You saw how to use PyCharm to help you write better code with fewer errors, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. I highly encourage you to check our documentation for more details. I hope this video was useful for you. If you still have questions, ask them in the comments down below. In the next episode, we'll see how to use run configurations to run your Python scripts. Also, feel free to leave your comments about the topics discussed and any other topics that you'd like us to cover in future episodes. See you in the next video.